Okay, this is chapter two, and chapter two is on descriptive st statistics, which is tables and graphs. And here we have some data, and we're going to make an ungrouped frequency table. Well, to make an ungrouped frequency table, you put all your values, your possible values, down the left-hand column, and these values are ranked from lowest to highest. And so they start off at two, and the highest possible value is eight. So I list all the values from two up through eight. And on the right-hand side, I put the frequency. In other words, how many twos were there? Well, there is one two, and that's why there is a one right here. How many threes were there? We're up to three. How many threes were there? There was two threes. How many fours? There was no fours. How many fives? There's one five. That's why there's a one right here. How many sixes? three sixes, how many sevens, none, and how many eights, one. And that's an ungrouped frequency table. Now that's really straightforward. What's a little bit tough is doing the grouped frequency table. And uh, the rest of the videos that will show you um, a, the uh, author of the textbook doing these problems by hand. But now we're going to do the grouped frequency table uh, using the Excel sheet. So here's my data that I'm going to do a group frequency table for. And what that means is that we want to break this data into groups. And somebody would tell you how many groups or classes to break it up into. And so let's say we want to break this into five classes. Now to do it by hand, just a real quick summary, is what you do is you figure out the range by taking your highest score minus your lowest. And then you divide that by the number of classes. And you always go up to the next significant unit. Our significant unit is in the ones position, so we go up to the next one, which is 12, and our class width is 12. But uh, we can go ahead and do this on the uh, Excel sheet. We would put this data, the 22, 27, and so on, from your course documents area, this data, into the Excel sheet on the raw data area. So I have that data in there already. And then once you get all your data in, which you can see it's, it's all in there, once you get that data in there, then you just put the number of classes that you want to break it into right here. So I put five in right there. And here you have to say how many decimal places are to the right. Well, since these are whole numbers, there are zero decimal places to the right. These are whole numbers. Once you get that in here, you automatically have your table made up. Here's your lower limit and your upper limit for each uh, group. So your first group goes from 22 to 33 and it counts it for you that there are five people that landed in this score range of 22 to 33. Your relative frequency, cumulative frequency, class mark, and degrees for a pie graph are all calculated in this area right here. And this is for each group. And that's what is uh, is done by hand in the notes and on the other videos, but this is, is does this for you. Plus it calculates the mean, median range, and lots of other statistics that we'll get into later on this one area. Okay, and here it is worked out by hand. And then the second problem was what if we had some decimals going on here? Well here's a problem that has uh, some decimal points in there. We have values of 1.23. In other words, we have two numbers to the right of the decimal point, And it says to break this up into three classes or three groups. So what I would do is I would have to get rid of the data that's in here and type in um, the new data. But actually, I, I have this saved in another location. So let me um, open this up. And here's the data for the second set of data that we have here is typed into the raw data sheet with uh, the number of groups is three, and the decimal places has to be two. Once you put that in there, you'll have your all your information, your lower limit and upper limit of your classes, the frequency, relative frequency, cumulative frequency, class mark, and degrees in a pie graph all calculated for you automatically. On the right-hand side, it ranks your data from lowest to highest if it wasn't already ranked for you. And that'll do it.